In today's video, we will break down the three pillars of credit risk probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default. So, before diving into these components, let's first understand credit risk. In simple terms, credit risk is the risk that a borrower won't repay their loan, causing a financial loss to the lender. This is a major concern for banks, NBFCs, and financial institutions. Every time a bank issues a loan, whether to an individual, business, or corporation, it takes on the risk that the borrower might default. To quantify this risk, bank uses three key parameters probability of default, loss given default, and exposure at default. Probability of default tells us how likely is the borrower to default. Loss given default tells us if the borrower defaults, how much of the loan will bank lose. And exposure at default talks about how much money is at stake at the time of default. These three factors help banks calculate expected losses and determine how much capital they need to set aside to cover potential loan losses as per Basel II and Basel III guidelines. Now let's break these down one by one. The first component is probability of default. It measures the likelihood that a borrower will default on their loan within a given time frame, usually one year. It's typically expressed as a percentage. For example, if a bank assesses that a company has a 5% PD, it means there's a 5% chance that the company will default within a year. Here's the graph showing how default probability increases as credit risk worsens. You can see a sharp rise from prime profiles to deep subprime profiles. Please note that credit risk profiles classify borrowers based on their credit worthiness and likelihood of default. These categories help banks and financial institutions assess risk when lending money. So the first category is the prime category. It consists of low-risk borrowers with high credit score. They have strong repayment history, low debt levels and high income. One can get the best interest rates and loan terms. Next is the near prime category. It consists of moderate risk borrowers. They may have some late payments or higher debt levels and are offered loans with slightly higher interest rates. Next is the subprime category. It consists of borrowers having history of missed payments, high debt or defaults. Their loan comes with higher interest rates to compensate for the risk. The last but not the least is the deep subprime category. It consists of borrowers having multiple defaults, bankruptcies or severe financial distress. They often need secured loans or pay extremely high interest rates. Now let's discuss how is PD calculated. PD is determined using credit score models, historical default data and machine learning techniques. So some common methods include credit scoring models such as logistic regression and other ML models, rating agencies such as Moody's, S&P, Fitch Ratings, internal risk rating by banks. So for example, a AAA rated come corporate bond will have a very low PD while a company with a junk rating triple C or below will have a high PD. Imagine you are a bank lending money to a startup. Since startups have a higher failure rate, their PD will be significantly higher compared to a well-established company. Now let's move on to our second component, loss given default, which represents how much of a loan a bank expects to lose if a borrower defaults. It's expressed as a percentage of total exposure. It is calculated as LGD is equal to 1 minus it of the rate. So for instance, if a bank lends rupees 1 lakh and expects to recover 40,000 from it after default, then LGD is 60%, meaning the bank loses 60% of the total amount. For other firm, let's say if the recovery rate is 30%, then LGD is equal to 1 minus that 30%, which is 1 minus 0.30 comes out to be 70%. So how is LGD calculated? LGD depends on several factors such as collateral value, legal and recovery cost, market conditions, industry specific risk. Collateral value we can say like if a loan is secured by a property then how much can the bank recover from it? 
So for example, a home loan will have a lower LGD because the bank can sell the property if the borrower defaults. Whereas an unsecured loan has a higher LGD since there is no loan. Now moving on to our third component which is exposure at default. Exposure at default is the total amount the bank is exposed to when a borrower defaults. It is crucial because many banks don't have a fixed outstanding balance. Borrowers can withdraw more money from credit lines or overdraft increasing the total exposure. For example, if a customer has a credit card limit of 10,000 rupees and has already used 7,000 from it, but based on historical data, banks estimate that they might use another 1,000 from it before default. So, the total EAD is rupees 8,000. So, how is EAD calculated? For term loans, EAD is usually the outstanding balance. For revolving credit facilities, say credit cards, EAD considers the current balance and the potential future utilization before default. So for example, a personal loan with a fixed EMI has a predictable EAD, but a business overdraft facility can have an increasing EAD as the borrower withdraws more funds. Now bringing it all together, let's discuss expected loss calculation. Now that we have understand PD, LTD and EAD, let's see how they come together to calculate expected loss. Expected loss is equal to PD multiplied by LGD multiplied by EAD. For example, PD is say 5%, LGD is say 60% and the outstanding exposure is of 1 lakh. This means that the bank expects to lose 3000 on an average for this loan as calculated. Banks use this information to set aside capital and price loans accordingly. To summarize, what we have discussed today is that PD tells us how likely a borrower will default, whereas LGD tells us how much will be lost if they default. And EAD tells us how much is at risk at default. Together, they help banks manage risk, set interest rates, and comply with regulatory requirements like Basel laws. So this ends our video. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel Risk Modeling Hub, and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll happy to answer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.